Have you ever bought a toothbrush? Have you ever thought what does it take the toothbrush to end up in your hands every day? Today I want to share with you why do I think selling the toothbrushes and driving the agile transformation has a lot in common. My name is Ekaterina. Uh, I'm a chart director and I'm the product owner at Agile GTI. And as well, I am the entrepreneur at heart. Um, my whole family, both my parents and my sisters, are entrepreneurs. And yet, you might think that I'm the black sheep, but my personal mission is to drive the entrepreneurial mindset in the company where 45,000 people work. And today, um, I wanted to share with you my perspective of what sometimes is not working well when we are talking about the Agile transformation. Uh, can you please raise the hand if you have ever heard the statistics from McKinsey that 70% of, of the transformations fail? Oh, there is a lot of people who have heard it. Uh, and they give all the good reasons. They say it's because of the lack of the commitment from the CEO. They say that it's because the transformation office has not been established. They say it's because um, people don't have the uh, ability or don't have the knowledge. And I think it's all the good reasons. It's all reasonable, right? Um, but today I will share with you why I think those changes are sometimes not sustainable. So what about toothbrushes? The first thing which I have realized when I started leading the Agile transformation with JTI is that it's a free market. There are a lot of initiatives going on and uh, you're fighting, maybe not for people's uh, money, but you're fighting for their time, mind and heart. And if we will imagine that we are driving the toothbrush company, what we would, would we do first? We will conduct a research. We'll try to understand on which market we are operating. What are the people's needs? how we will sell our product. Will it be the hotels? Will it be dentist offices? Or will it be supermarket, right? Uh, and the same with agile transformation. When we are starting, I think the most important thing to do first is to do your homework, to do your research, to understand what are really the people's wants and needs. What are they struggling with? Um, in JTI, we learned it hard way. We started from the big organizational design change, and I'm not even sure what problem or need exactly it was solving. So now, every time my team or myself, we're approaching the new leader, the first thing we start is with listening. We just try to understand what are the needs of these people? What are their desires? We never start with straight away saying, oh, hey, try Scrum, it's so much better than Waterfall. We just try to understand what exactly, um, how exactly we can be helpful to them. The second thing is uh, identifying your target audience. Can you imagine the toothbrush company which comes and says, our product is for everyone, for kids, adults, for the low income, high income, for the one who cares about the environment and doesn't care about the environment. Uh, I'm not sure how this product will look like. Yet this is what we hear quite often uh, in the companies. The whole company should transform. And I guess it works for some, but I'm not a huge fan of this approach. I think that it's much more powerful if you understand who exactly are you targeting. Who is your target audience? And then you will create the product based on the audience. So in JTI, uh, we have identified two main target audiences, just two. The first, this is the curious and interested. And the second, this is the leaders. So if you don't care. Is it uh, the end diagram at all? Or no? <laughs> 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 it could be. Uh, so, <clears throat> uh, if you're not interested and you're not open to hear and you don't want to listen, you're just not our client. And why we have identified the leaders because 
uh, we work in the organization where everyone is look, looks up. So if you win the leaders, then people will follow. And based on these audience, two audiences, we are designing everything what we are doing. Our um, communication, our programs, what we are doing. Um, everything is done just to serve those two groups. The third thing is, okay, we know who we are targeting. We know it's a free market. Now we want to understand what are the customer needs. And again, come into the toothbrushes, why people would buy a toothbrush? Because they want to look nice, because they want to have a beautiful smile, because they don't want to go to the dentist too often. Maybe they even want to have the toothbrush which will perfectly fit into their interior. But you don't hear that often that people buy the toothbrush because it will serve them 10 years and the plastic it's made is per perfect, right? So the needs of the people in your organization might be also very different. Some of them, they just want to be the part of the bigger community. They w don't want to be alone in their journey. Some of them, they want to have the support of their line manager. Some of them would want to understand in the very, very simple terms without spending too much time. What does Scrum or value stream mapping means? So when we're talking with the people in JTI, uh, usually there are um, uh, one main ask. Please tell me how exactly it works in HR. Please tell me how exactly Agile works in finance. Please tell me how exactly it works in my function. And even better, if you will tell me how it works in JTI exactly. Because the other uh, company's experience is not that relevant to us. And please don't tell me how it works in IT because we are not IT. And this is fine. And this is what we are targeting and this is what we are doing. We are trying to tell them exactly what they need and explain in the very simple terms so they can easily relate to it. To it. And the last but not least, is marketing. So, in the, if we were the owners of the toothbrush companies, I can imagine uh, several things which we could do. We could identify the influencers, right? This is maybe the people with a Hollywood smile, maybe it will be some TikToker, depending who is our target audience. Maybe it will be dentist community. Then we might want to conduct an event, right? For the dentist who will, where we'll share our amazing toothbrush, explain how it works and why they should recommend it to their clients. Maybe uh, we will do uh, sharing reviews on our website where the happy customers will be writing, I checked this toothbrush, it's amazing. And the same with the digital transformation. Uh, we can identify our influencers. This is the people who are representing our values and our beliefs and we can give them more space and put it, them on the spotlight and get people to know them. We can um, conduct an event where we, people will be talking about the agility, scrum, kanban, experimentation or whatever. And we can uh, share the reviews. We can interview the teams who has been th running through the same journey and they have tried the job and they liked it and this is what they enjoyed about this. And this is as well what we are trying to do in, in uh, JTI. So we have conducted a um, uh, TED talk like event where people were talking about the experimentations and it was our influencers, the people who are very well respected in the company talking about their experimentation. It was a huge success. Uh, this year we're also planning to conduct, uh, to make a series of podcasts where we will talk with the people who were uh, Agile leads and as well we'll interview and check with them what works, what doesn't work. And please don't get me wrong, I'm not talking about creating the brand and logo for your Agile transformation. It's more about creating how the people will feel about this change. Will they be excited? Will they love it? or will they be bored, bored, bored to death? 
In conclusion, I want to say that I truly believe that if we will first research the needs of our employees, if we will target our agile transformation towards their needs, we will see the great results. I strongly believe that our efforts can go beyond just being a buzzword, assumption, and if we will really implement the employee-centered approach, we can create an amazing positive wave of change. Thank you very much. It was a pleasure to present to you today.